Well, hello there. This is Craig Story, Dr. Story from Gordon College. I am the health professions advisor, as you may know, and I've been doing this job since 2005. Uh, it's a fun part of my job. I enjoy advising students as they plan for health professions, and I lead the health profession seminar class. There are six or seven commonly asked questions, which uh, I hear quite often, and I thought I would put together a quick presentation that would cover those major questions. And you can save this in a safe place and uh, watch it over and over again. And uh, hopefully we'll answer many of the common questions for you. I don't want this to be too long, so I'll go relatively quickly through these. So <clears throat> when should I apply to medical school? Um, if you want to go straight through, you would take you would apply this summer after your junior year if you want to take a gap year that means you would apply after your senior year now i have a document that describes the the possible advantages of waiting a year there are lots of them so please please consider that uh carefully and realize that you know waiting is not a bad thing it's very common actually <clears throat> What about letters of recommendation? Ah, uh, yes. Well, in health professions, uh, in pre-med uh, uh, applications, you don't have letters of recommendation. You have letters of evaluation. And that is uh, from people that know you professionally. You want about five letters. Two or three of them can be from faculty. Maybe your advisor would be one. Uh, and then another faculty from, say, chemistry, physics, some other faculty, maybe humanities faculty, someone that you know uh, that you have impressed in some way that can write about you. And then two or three from work contacts. Often it's good to have one from a physician as well. Um, these should be professional acquaintances, uh, not necessarily, not family members, right? That's really important. And yeah, so this is from another, just I searched on letter evaluation. And certainly um, this is the thing that that's it, they call this uh, in the field, if you will. And um, yeah, very important. What happens to these letters? Okay, how do I get them? So there's a form called the evaluator form, which uh, you have access to as a pre-med applicant. In the form, your evaluator is given the very specific instructions on how to submit it, what to talk about, that kind of thing. And you're going to give this to them, write on it, um, what school you're applying to, and, uh, and that kind of thing. Now, Gordon uses what we call a composite letter. It's not a committee letter, which some schools use, where committees um, take little extracts and snippets from the letters. We actually include all of the content of the individual letters with little paragraphs connecting them. This letter gets uh, put together by me and then reviewed and signed by the Health Professions Committee. And it's a powerful letter. I've heard very good things from medical schools about our letters. This is a uh, screenshot of the letter of evaluation request letter that you will use to uh, send send out uh, to to get these letters, and they get sent to us um, electronically, typically today. All right. So that's about the letters. Um, <clears throat> oh, the letters should be in by before the time your application is going just early summer so try to get these done in April May if you can I know that's right about now yeah now is a good time if you're applying for medical school this summer uh, as this is being done in uh, mid-April it's not a not too late to uh, it's not too early I should say to start requesting these letters do I need to take calc 1 and calc 2 a uh, no no, you do not need to take Calc 1 and Calc 2. A typical bio major takes Survey of Calc and Biostats. That's two courses total, Survey of Calc and Biostats. But if you take Calc 1 and Biostats, that's not sufficient. You have to take Calc 2 and Calc 1 together. They go together, Calc 1 and Calc 2. It's a complete package. Now, if you love mathematics and you're good at mathematics, I encourage my students, my advisees, to take Calc 1 and 2. Um, having more math is never a bad thing, but some people, you know, they're like this guy, they have, they have some problems with it. So for you, please take this array of calc, but you still have to take biostats. If you take calc one and two, that's three courses total. I hope that was clear. If you look at the, at the, uh, 
catalog, it will say that in the catalog. Writing requirement. I need two writing requirements for pre-med. What do I do? Well, you'll have plenty of writing by just doing the core. You'll have your, your TGC and some other English or lit class, presumably. But but do take a writing class, a writing intensive course. Med schools want to know that you um, you write good, right? Uh, so you know, take a creative writing course for a fun challenge that could actually help you. You're going to be doing a lot of writing as part of your application. So you might as well get some feedback while you're here. Learn to edit your writing. Make it good. Make it tight. Do I have to take physics at Gordon? You, uh, you shouldn't un under the ideal circumstances. But, there's a big but. Physics is known to be pretty tough, pretty hard. Uh, requires a lot of discipline to do well in. A lot of, t a lot of time. You might not get an A. And the reality of the situation is that many, many schools, students do take physics elsewhere during the summer, another institution. You really just want to avoid doing horribly in physics. So uh, taking a slightly less intense version of physics in the summer, or maybe just being able to focus on it during the summer, focusing on one thing in an intensive way will help you do better. Um, so you are the one who needs to decide this for yourself. Another thing to consider is if you take physics and OCHEM at the same time, you pretty much shouldn't take anything else, any other bios. But if you want to take immunology, say, uh, and, or, or say biochem and OCHEM and physics all at the same time, that's, that's hard. So maybe do the physics in the summer and take care of that problem. All right. Biochem at Gordon can be taken without lab, but only if there's a situation where you have three labs. You really should take the lab for biochem if you can. It really helps reinforce, uh, reinforce, reinforce things. What about the MCAT? What about that medical college admissions test? It's very important. You got to prepare. You got to do practice tests, lots of practice tests and do them under the actual timing conditions because the timing is important. You need to do this test in a speedy fashion. People, some people are very thorough and methodical in their work. Thorough, by thorough I mean slow. They take their time. They do a great job, but they take their time. It's not going to work well on this exam, so you need to practice, 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 doing it faster and faster. It's really not necessarily a good thing that that's what it's testing for in part is your speediness. Because after all, not all specialties in medicine require speediness. Some do, not all of them do. Um, use Khan Academy videos for MCAT prep. Um, use the study materials provided. Remember that your courses are actually helping you prepare. Even your psychology courses, there's a humanities section now on the MCAT. Your high MCAT score will give you access to more schools, more selective schools. And your lower MCAT score will force you to consider less competitive options. When you're applying, definitely have a broad spread in terms of the options of schools to apply to. I just went online and found, um, you know, searched for uh, the MCAT. And, you know, there's lots, lots of um, very helpful bits of information online um, right there for you how to actually apply to medical school. You've got to go through the AMCAS system or the ACMAS system for osteopathic medical schools. They're obviously a web-based and you have to enter a lot of information, including typing in all of your courses, all of your grades. They then have to be, they get your transcripts and they confirm all the information that you typed in. Uh, so don't plan to do this over the weekend. It's something that takes a bit of time. You can keep working on it before you actually submit the application. But you want it to be done with the application by July at the latest, all right? September, October applicants, I'm sad to say, they're late. They're very late, and unless they're incredible stuff, something really special, you're not uh, likely to get, get in on that try. Uh, don't worry, though, about submitting on the first day or the first hour. That does not really matter. Just as long as you're in there in the first month, two months, you'll be fine. You'll get looked at. Um, in the application process, you need to submit, submit 
under the letters, what kind of letter? Do not submit individual letters because remember, we're doing a committee letter, which really is a composite letter signed by the committee. So that will generate a form that you send to me and um, then I can actually use the numbers on that form to submit your letter. So get that form and uh, we will get that letter done. So AAMC website has tons and tons of information, just lots of information uh, on applying to med schools. So please use that information. Here's, uh, I've highlighted taking the um, MCAT exam, preparing for medical school. So that's all of these things you see here come when you hover over the applying to medical school uh, application uh, uh, section of this. Um, applying to uh, MD PhD programs, only do that if you really love the research, if you're a PhD type of a person who also wants to be a doctor. Um, it can be a good deal, it can be good financially, but you really have to be dedicated to research. The AACOM uh, site, Osteopathic Medical School, is uh, you may be wondering, hmm, I don't know what that is. Well, go there and look, what is osteopathic medicine? All right, the history, why I consider a career, it's all there for you. It's a second world of, um, of medical schools uh, that, that are distinct in, in certain ways, and, and yet there's a, there's a big overlap in what they teach you. It's, it's very um, well accepted today, whereas in the early days was a little bit looked down upon, but now it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a definite possibility for you. They're not as selective because not as many people apply to them. So spend a ton of time on your personal statement. This is one of the application things you need to do is have a personal statement. Um, you're answering the question, why do you want to be, why do you want to be a doctor, right? Why, why do you want to be a doctor? That's the key question. Use examples, use stories, use your own voice, be yourself. So have people read it who know you and say, yeah, that sounds right. That sounds like genuine. Oh, there's a typo here. Fix all the typos, then edit it some more um, and send it to me for a final critique as I can pick up on stuff that I've, I've seen uh, reviewing these over the years, and I, I can be very helpful there. Do not say, I am fascinated by the human body, or I want to help people, or I have always wanted to become a doctor, because guess what these are? These are cliches. They may be true, but don't say them. Just express it through the stories you tell, through the examples you give. Don't explicitly say cliches because people will just shake their head and say, oh, another one who wants to help people. <laughs> See what I mean? Okay. How many schools should I apply to? You're wondering. Well, one school, no. Do not apply to one school just to see if you can get in. That is not a good strategy. When you apply, you want to put in full force effort. All right, and and apply to all the schools that you might want to want to go to. Around twelve schools. Consider where these schools are in the country. Does a school have a associated city hospital where you'll be doing a lot of work with poor with the poor, um, like Boston City Hospital, BU, uh, Tufts? What about the curriculum? Um, is it a problem-based curriculum? Is it a traditional curriculum? Um, if you can get into a state school, that is generally the best plan you can imagine because it's the cheapest, right? Use the MSAR to help you. Now, what is this MSAR? Medical School Admissions Requirements, MSAR. Used to be a thick book, now it's all online, and it tells you how selective the school is. It tells you what the average MCAT scores are, what the range is, and so on. You can learn how selective the schools are. All medical schools are good, you guys. They're all good. They're all accredited. And when you're done, no matter what medical school you go to, you will be a what? A doctor. All right. So and then you can go wherever on your residency, you know, and really go to some more maybe illustrious location or, or, or place or program. Right. So do your best. What about interviews? Probably shouldn't worry too much about them. But of course, before interviewing, you want to do some practice interviews. Gordon offers those, uh, usually offer those in April. Um, some schools have traditional interviews, some schools have multiple mini interviews. You can go online and search 
and find examples of interview questions and write out answers to those or think through what you're going to say, right? Don't be shocked when they ask you, so why do you want to be a why do you want to come to, to medical school? Or when they ask you, why do you want to come to um, this medical school, not another medical school? What is it about our medical school that you like? Or something like that. You, you really need to do your homework um, and, and know something about the school you're visiting. Travel the day before if it's far away so you have some time to, to relax, look professional and well-rested. And you will need mucho dinero to do this. You need money. A few thousand bucks at least, probably. It's unfortunate, but you will need money to travel around the country and interview. So start saving now. Uh, hit up your um, grandparents and, and rich uncles or aunts to uh, help fund you in this endeavor. All right. Once you get into medical school, banks will give you loans because you're a good bet to be able to pay it back. Um, but getting into medical school requires certain resources, and it's a little unfair to to the poor. Um, but since when is life fair to the poor? Um, it's unfortunate, but you can save your money and you can be aware now that this is an important thing to consider. Um, okie doke. Um, other questions? I would ask you to ask me. And my email is craig.story at gordon.edu. You all know that. Make sure you've actually signed up for a health professions as a concentration officially. It should indicate that on your course check sheet. And remember to take Health Professions Seminar, wherein you will uh, get a four semester, four half semester series of, of visits with guests each week on Thursday evenings. It's a wonderful time and a uh, good time to evaluate whether this career is really what you thought it was or what it can be uh, for you that, um, that ultimately we hope that you will find uh, the career that God is calling you to that will really um, be a blessing to you and allow you to be a blessing to others. Well, thank you for your time, and I hope this has been helpful. Over and out.